All right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to part one of my YouTube mini series. Today, we are going to cover console emulation. Console emulation is taking our small bedroom studio and making it sound like a real life professional analog studio. Um, the reason why we want to do that is because, especially in uh, rock music or other various genres, doing any type of music in a digital audio workstation um, may sound really like digital, you know, not really like authentic, organic, or even like real sounding. And this is the way to kind of emulate that without having to go out and spend thousands and thousands of dollars. Um, I'm going to go over the stages that we need to complete that. And then I'm going to actually take you into the music session and do it step by step there so we can really see the results in the end. All right, here we go. So there are four stages to console emulation. Stage one is setting up our analog preamp. Uh, an analog preamp would be anything that you use to plug an instrument in to record it, um, whether it's a guitar, a microphone. The first thing that the sound hits would be the analog preamp in the big giant mixing console that you see in a professional studio. Um, the analog preamp is going to set the gain of the instrument to be able to uh, give it sound so that you can hear what you are recording. Uh, from the preamp, it goes into number two, which is the analog tracking board, which are the components of a mixing console. We want to be able to get the sound that a mixing console or a tracking console would um, would make so that we can have part two of the analog sound. Um, from the mixing console, it goes into number three, which is the tracking tape. Uh, tracking tape is a tape machine used during the tracking stage. And then from the tracking tape, it goes back into the analog mixing board and it's the sound coming back in from tape. Just a quick disclaimer, there are a lot of videos out there, especially on YouTube, um, that cover a lot of these same uh, techniques, especially console emulation. I highly recommend you check them out. Um, they dive a little bit further than I am about uh, this type of work, but I definitely wanted to put this together so that I could show my way of doing things as well. So check those out. They are very, inf uh, very informational and let's continue on. All right. At this point, we have our session. I uh, just want to go over a few things. Uh, the very first thing that you may notice is the different colors. Uh, that is because I like to organize my sessions like this, where um, different tracks that we have in our DAW <clears throat> are color-coded. That way, they're easier to find and easier to navigate through, and they also look good for the YouTube videos. So want to put these together this way. Uh, I'm just going to go over a few more things, and then I will play the song that I put together in order to make this video. I just wanted to make note as well that in the drums section, you do only see one track for the drums. And that is because the drums that I put together are all on one track. Normally what I would do during a mixing session would be to have everything separated. Um, all my kicks, all my snares, uh, overheads, toms, they're all gonna be on separate tracks. That way I can dial them in really good and mix them individually. But for time constraints and things like that, I wanted to make sure that this was all just on one track. So starting at the top, I have a guitar effect that I have uh, put on for the intro of the song. Um, we got a crash. Of course, I already covered the drums. Then we have a guitar melody uh, that I put together in... Uh, Contact 7 by Native Instruments. They are very good at emulating uh, various instruments, including guitar. So this is the track that I use for that. Uh, we have a bass guitar. And we have a stomp at the end, which kind of adds a little transition effect at the end. Um, another thing I did, too, before we get started going into the mixer here is... I adjusted the levels because we really want to get a good balanced mix before we do any of this. That way everything kind of comes out clean. Uh, it's less work for what we have to do for console emulation. 
So without further ado, I'll go ahead and play the track. Again, nothing is done on this. Um, if there's any plugins that you see on here, everything is muted or disabled. This is just the, the track that I put together that is only mixed. Here we go. All right, not bad, huh? So the first thing that I like to do, especially in mixing, no matter what I'm doing, whether it's this video or any other video, is I like to start with drums. So we're gonna come over to our drums tab and like in the slideshow, the first thing that we add for console emulation is our analog preamp. We're gonna use the Universal Audio Neve 1073. All right, so we have our Neve 1073. It looks like a real analog preamp. Well, that's because it is. Uh, the Neve 1073 channel amplifier is easily the most uh, most used, most popular preamp and EQ circuit ever designed. Uh, it was introduced in 1970. It is a Class A transistor mic line amp with EQ. And it epitomizes the beautiful Neve sound with unparalleled clarity, sheen, and bite. We're not going to be using any of the EQ techniques in here. We're just going to use the uh, line gain here. So go ahead and take this, bump it up a little bit. All right, we're sitting at around 10. That should give it enough, give us some good juice. So I'm going to go ahead and solo the drums, and we're going to play this back. So right away we notice this has a lot more juice to it than it did before. So I'll go ahead and play it back. And the reason why we're going to keep listening to it is because while we're doing this, we have to be aware of the levels here. Because you don't want it to be actually louder than the original sound. What you want it to be is a little bit fuller. All console emulation is going to do is just going to add some color, some vibe to the to the song. You know, we don't want to completely increase the actual sound level of it, uh, which is called gain staging. And I'll get to that in just a, in, in just a little bit here. So I'm going to mute this also called bypass. I'm going to bypass the analog preamp and we're just going to watch the levels here right in this spot here and see what our number is. So when we uh, turn the preamp back on, we want to kind of get it as close as possible to that. So let's do that. All right, so we're sitting at like around minus 13 dB. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on. We can see how high it jumped. So what we could do is we could compensate or gain stage. I'm just going to turn the output down. So this is the input. We're driving the input. Then we're lowering the output. And then we want to get back. Pretty close to where we were when we started. Bypass this. We can hear the difference. All right, minus 12.3. Try it again. We could ballpark it, yeah, that's pretty good. All right, so before and after. Yeah, we're getting somewhere already. We only did the first part. All right, stage two is going to be our analog mixing board. 
And the best way to emulate that is going to be Slate Digital's virtual mix rack. Get rid of these. These are some of my favorite plugins ever. All right, so this plugin, virtual channel, it emulates one, two, three, four, five, six different analog consoles. Uh, some of the most f um, famous, I would say, um, consoles all around the world. Um, I'm not going to be able to go too far in depth with these due to time, but I can tell you uh, the, the standard one here is the Brit 4KE. Um, that is modeled after the SSL 4000E console. Um, it's known for its tight but punchy low end, warm low mids, and a present mid range. The next one is the Brit 4KG, which is modeled after the SSL 4000G console. Um, also very popular, known for its clean, punchy, wide, slightly aggressive quality. We have the USA console, which is modeled after the API 1604 known for its thick and fat tone with incredible vibe and mid-range punch. Uh, for, this, for this video, we're going to be using the Brit N, um, one of the most popular consoles of all time. It is modeled after the Neve 8048 console, known for its rich, fat, and warm sound. So up here, we have a nice view meter. You know, again, looks like an analog console. And what we want to do is get the sound between three and one. And what that's going to do is just kind of drive and give it a little bit of color um, as an analog console would. So let's begin that. Again, we're staying on the drums here. All right, so it looks like for this specific track, it's going to be right at uh, right at zero because right away, even without doing anything, it definitely adds um, definitely adds some analog saturation, and that and that's the whole thing. We just you know we want to be able to add a little bit as we go. Um, you're not going to completely hear a big difference um, because uh, by the end of this, you'll you'll definitely hear the hear the difference because if you have if you have a lot of saturation. Um, on a specific track, and you just keep building off of that, then it's going to sound like really distorted and, and you know and really fake. This is where a little bit can go a long way. So the tracking tape that we're going to use, we're going to go back to a, a Universal Audio, and we have the Oxide tape. Again, one of the most uh, famous tracking tapes in music. All right, the Oxide tape recorder gives you the music. Mixable sound of tape, letting you quickly add clarity, punch, and warmth to vocals, guitars, drums, and more. And it's very simple. All we want to do is just increase the input, and then we'll compensate again or also gain stage the output. Let's do it. Right away, we already got some good punch going without even increasing this thing. It's incredible. Let's just drive this up. Okay, we want to pay attention to our levels. Now we'll turn the output down. It's easier if you loop it, that way you don't have to keep stopping it and going back around. All right, let's mute it or bypass it. And back on. And then the last one, we're gonna bring back our virtual mix rack. All right, so on this one, just to add a, a little bit of flavor, a little bit of a different sound. We did the Brit N, which was the Neve console. Um, when we go back in, we're going to go back into the 
uh, Brit 4KG, which is again, the SSL 4000G console. Just to give it a little bit of a different sound, but still, you know, we still wanna try and do the same thing here, so. This one we actually had to turn uh, turn the input down a little bit just to get it in that in that sweet spot. It's not going to be perfect. It might bounce around a little bit into the red there. All this is going to do is just add a little bit of extra um, saturation. If you cranked it all the way up, this would actually start to light red, and we get a little bit of unwanted distortion, unless that's the sound that you're actually going for. But for this one, we want a nice, clean little bit of saturation to get that console emulation sound. All right, now that the drums are done. Um, I could just go and move uh, these plugins or put them on a new track. Uh, there's different ways of doing it. Um, for this specific one, um, I'm going to show a way that can save some CPU usage because we don't want to burn the computer because these plugins use a lot of um, a lot of CPU, um, and we're going to bake them in, or in other words, print. And printing is basically like what they would do in an analog studio where they would print the tape um, in order to have the finished sound. So in our digital audio workstation, I'm just going to select it here. I'm gonna do what's called a bounce in place, which is also printing it. I'm just gonna set the destination to a new track and we're gonna leave everything else alone. So let's go ahead and bounce this. And we have a new track with our analog sound on it. So I'll go ahead and bypass all these plugins so that we can hear the original and then switch it over to the printed version. All right, let's go. Now our new version. So you can hear the difference already, even just by doing a few of those little uh, little plugins there. All right, now that that's done, we're gonna repeat each of those steps on every single one of these tracks. Um, the big ones that I wanna focus on are the drums, the guitar melody, and the bass guitar. Um, the other ones are samples and you know pretty much effects, so we don't necessarily have to uh, emulate those. So let's go over to our guitar melody and we'll go ahead and play the play the guitar melody here we don't want to copy and, and paste um, the work that we have done already because every track is going to sound a little different so we might have to tame them a little bit differently than we did the drums but we still want to give the same idea we want to stick to around the same level as it was uh, when it was the raw track. That way we're not changing really the sound too much. Again, we're just adding um, a little bit of analog saturation to it, which is gonna go a long way. Dial this up, 10, let's play it. I'm gonna bypass it first because I wanna see what, uh, what level we need to be at. That's a minus 25. All right, it's gonna jump up now. And then gain stage. And we'll, again, we'll go back up to the Brit N, which is the Neve console. Good. And repeat like we did in the first.
bypass. And back on. Sweet. And back to our analog mix board. Brit 4KG. Let's do it. And let's listen to the guitars A and B again, like we did with the drums. All right, now the new version. Back on the old version, new version. Awesome. Next, let's move over to bass guitar. Um, of course, I highly recommend if you haven't already, I'll probably put it at the beginning of this video as a disclaimer to uh, recommend using a good set of earbuds or some uh, good speakers to watch this on so that you can get the full uh, experience on what we're doing here today. Preamp first. I'll just turn this up a little bit just so we can uh, hear a little better since it's bass. Got around minus 22. Again, we want a gain stage. So much easier the gain stage as you do it. If you're off by a decibel, it's fine. It does not have to be perfect, as long as you're in that ballpark range. Back to our analog tracking board. Brit N. Good. Just so we could keep it moving. We don't have to stay on it too long. Again, we don't want to go too far, like especially getting in that red area because we'll get some unwanted distortion. Unless that's what you're going for. Gain stage with the output. And then our last stage again. Great. So again, the more you do this, the more quickly you can move. Now that we have that, we're gonna move on to the next part to where um, we're gonna start um, adding a little bit of everything in so we can hear the finished product. All right, so at this point in our console emulation process, we cover the drums, the guitar, and the bass. I clean the session back up and dial back in the levels to where it was sound good. So we'll go ahead and play it just to review. All right, so we're gonna already hear uh, the difference there. One additional step um, that I do recommend when doing this type of work is to add compression to the guitar and the bass. Because a lot of times um, in professional studios when they're recording, because remember, this is as if we're recording the session. I obviously don't have a guitar or a bass 
uh, to record these these sounds. So we're doing this as if we're in the studio and we're tracking and recording this live. And one of the most important things that a lot of producers try to do is uh, to add a little bit of compression in the tracking stage to make the mixing part easier. Um, Because compression is, of course, as anybody who's watching this um, understands a little bit about compression, I would hope. Um, (laughs) uh, Compression is going to just make mixing easier. Um, It's going to bring up a little bit of the tailing end sounds of a guitar or a bass, and it's going to just kind of bring it everything together. So I'm going to go ahead and add compression to the guitar track first. And then I'll go ahead and do the bass after, and I'll kind of just show you a little little technique on that as well. Uh, so again, uh, uh, staying on guitars, uh, guitars have a strong attack that dies away fairly quickly and gives wide dynamic range. Uh, to reduce that dynamic range, uh, light compression while allowing the attack, or I would say the strum, to come through. So that's what we're going to do on this track here. And one I recommend, my favorite one for a guitar is pretty much any 1176 compressor. Uh, one of the most famous compressors in the world. Uh, for this one in particular, we're going to use the 1176 LN Rev E. Sounds great on guitars. Uh, not going to get too much again into a lot of these plugins. Um, you can refer to the YouTube and, and other sources for great information on them. But uh, we're going to do a 41 ratio. That's the lowest that um, the 1176 can go. And we're going to have a little bit of a slower attack. That's because um, we want to start compressing right after the pick sound. We don't want to compress the accent. It's going to sound fake and we don't want that at all. All right, so a slower attack, remember, on 1176, especially this one, um, a higher number is faster and a lower number is slower. So let's dial that back, make it nice and slow there. And then we want a faster uh, release because the sound climbs back up as the sound decays on a guitar. Uh, We're going to increase the input until the VU meter moves. There's our input just like the other plugins that I showed. And then we're going to decrease the output knob to compensate. Again, we want to gain stage in this process. So let's do it. Watch the video meters. That sounds good. Moving on over to our bass track. We're going to use an 1176 again, but this time we're going to use the 1176 Rev A. This is the famous uh, blue 1176 compressor by Universal Audio. And it is fantastic on, uh, on bass guitars. It's going to make it a punchy bass with a lot of character. Again, we're going to go to a 4 to 1 ratio. We want the fastest attack and release. Again, this is going to give us a really punchy with a lot of character bass. And then again, we're going to drive the input up till we see the meter moving. This time we want to get into the minus 7 to minus 5 range. That's what's going to, that's going to be the sweet spot for the bass guitar. past and on again all 
Uh, this specific compressor also has what they like to call a smash mode. Um, I can shift click every single one of the ratios and that's going to kind of just give it a, a very different kind of sound. So let's try that real quick too. Now we're really, now we're really driving this compressor. It sounds great. Might be better on a, a different kind of track for this one. We want a little bit of a cleaner bass. So I'm going to go ahead and turn it off. I just wanted to show that real quick. All right, so now that our session is done, the last two stages that we have to apply in order to have console emulation is going to be mix bus em uh, emulation. And that's gonna emulate uh, analog summing and our master tape. In order to get analog summing, we bring up a plugin also in Slate called the Virtual Mix Bus. Um, it looks just like the um, the other plugin that we used called Virtual, uh, Virtual Channel. Virtual Mix Bus is going to pretty much glue the um, all the tracks together because we did all the processing on the, on the individual channels. Now everything is going to go through the Virtual Mix Bus. All right, so now that we have our virtual mic bus on here, we want to have the same setting as we did on our tracks, which was the Brit 4KG channel. I know in the first instance we did the Brit N, which emulated, again, the Neve, um, the Neve console. But since the second part was the Brit 4KG, this is going to be the setting that we're going to drive for our mix bus. So let's go ahead and listen to everything again. And again, we want to be in that three to one area. But this part of the mix, we definitely don't want to do too much changing because we did that already on the individual tracks. When it comes to the actual um, mix bus section, we don't want to do too much. Great. Again, unless you have a really highly trained ear, you're not going to hear too much of a difference in this, but I could kind of already tell that this thing's really coming together. So now that we got that, now we're going to bring up our master tape, which emulates the most popular master tape that there is. It's the Ampex ATR-102, and it's on our go-to settings in order to emulate master tape. Uh, for console emulation. Uh, these little buttons over here, again, I'm not going to go too much into the plugins, but I just want to kind of go over a little bit of what we're going to do here. So um, it's going to be uh, set to 30 IPS, which is inches per second, uh, where it says tape. These are the different tapes that we can use. Uh, 250 is going to be more of a cassette style tape. If you want that cassette tape sound, uh, 456, the one that we're going to use for the video, is going to model the tape from the 70s. And then we have the 900, which is a little bit more of a modern tape. And then GP9, which is what records use uh, today in modern music. So that's going to be 456. And then there's also calibration settings. Again, these things are really awesome to use. They very, very well emulate, get you to the very closest thing possible without actually having the real thing. Because I would say if you want to own one of these Ampex tape machines, it's going to be a lot of money. So for a great cost and a plug-in, why not? All right, so we're going to set our calibration to plus three. And then you can also change the tape head. There's one inch, half inch, a quarter inch. The recommended for console emulation here is gonna be half inch tape. And then what we're gonna do, I'll move this over here so we could see. So this is the channel we're on. This is everything, all these individual tracks go into this track, which is the stereo out. Again, this is gonna be where our mix bus is. And this is gonna be the levels of all these sounds combined into this one. So I'm gonna go ahead and mute this. Because again, we want a level match. We want to gain stage and get everything right so it's not sounding 
a little louder than it did before. So let's play it. So I have like minus 12. Let's turn on our tape machine. Pretty close. And then again, just like any other plugins, they have an input and an output. I'm just gonna mess with the settings just so we can get it about the same. All right, let's A-B comparison it. We'll start with it off, so you can hear the difference when we turn it on. So here's off. Let's turn it on. So those are the stages in order to produce console emulation in your home studio. Um, just down here, I showed the original mix before we did all the processing, and then I did an after. So we can really see, let me just unmute these real quick so you can see the color of them. Just the difference by just putting these few plugins on. Uh, to emulate console, the, the, the thickness and the, the different color that it adds to uh, the sounds without even doing any additional mixing. Yeah, we did a little bit of compression in the tracking stage for the guitar and the bass, but we didn't do any additional processing like EQing. We didn't do you know any other effects to make it to make it louder. We didn't put any reverb, delay, or anything else on it. And this is, shows the difference and what you can have when you apply analog saturation. So that's gonna do it for this video. Um, I said that this was part one, which means in part two, we're gonna dive a little bit deeper into this session and we're actually gonna mix it. We're gonna put some EQ on it. We're gonna put some effects on it. We're gonna do some really cool things that actually bring this record to life. And I'm gonna show you my step-by-step -step process on how I do that. All right, so. Thank you, everybody, for tuning in. Hope to see you on the next video. Peace.